Okay, let's continue um, the second part of the lecture. Um, I would like to discuss about the case of Doi Chang village, which is in the northern part of Thailand. Um, in this case, um, we have the situation where the village, this is the village, located over the area, um, really large area, but um, is located over the material that is unstable. This material we call colluvium, which is an old and slide or old debris okay, that been sliding um, down in this area in the past 100 years, 1000 years. And then later on, um, the people come and then uh, build a house over the Columbian area. Okay, which um, this material still continue moving from time to time, especially if it's getting wet or getting saturated. This is what happened in Doi Chang in Chiang Rai province. You can see there are so many, so uh, much of the evidence of the movement. For example, like this tree is leaning because of the ground move. Okay, um, the retaining wall is broken, damaged because of the the movement of the ground causing the separation of the ground and also the wall. And some of the uh, house, the column has been moved and tilled. This is so dangerous. Um, the approximate movement of the of the ground in this village is about 50 centimeters per year. So in one year, especially rainy season, the ground will move. Okay. And then um, these are the things that we need to really taking care of the safety of this area. Um, investigation has been done in order to check the topographic of the area. And then um, there are also some method, a special method to investigate the thickness of the moving part. From the uh, result of the investigation, we found that um, there, there is a loose material overlay over the rock material. This is rock. Okay, so this is about like 20 meter. Yeah, this 20 meter of colluvium material is sliding and it's quite wet. Okay, so whenever the rainfall comes, it's been it's become saturated and then starting to move. Um, this area photo showing the uh, color, uh, the the red color, okay, showing the house that damaged, okay, because of the ground movement. Okay, if we do the cross section here, look at the cross section here. Um, I install several instrumentation, for example, observation well. Um, this, this to monitor the changing of the ground water table. So that's, that's why they call observation well. I also install inclinometer. Inclinometer is a plastic tube a special plastic tube installed into the ground. And then if the ground move, and then this tube will move along, okay? And then we can detect the, the movement, okay, from that. From this cross section, you can see that um, down below here is a bedrock, but we have the colluvial material that is uh, a cover the bedrock about 20 meter or something like that. 
we also use a high accuracy uh, GPS survey in order to see the direction of the movement and also the magnitude of the movement. Um, it's all show that uh, the direction of the movement is coming into the downstream movement. Okay, and then um, it's almost in the same direction of the flow of the surface water. These are the observation well that install uh, in this village. Yeah, or the menu one, or the menu two, three, and so on. In kinometer, one and kinometer has been installed. The reason that we need to install you know, monitoring system is we want to make sure that um, this area is moved and this area needs a serious mitigation. So we need the solid evidence in order to uh, make everyone concerned okay, of what situation of this village. Um, this show the inclinometer movement. As I told you, inclinometer is just like a plastic tube installed deep into the ground. Basically, this inclinometer tube will be installed and then try to embed it in the firm rock or firm layer where there will be no movement. So it can be set as a reference of the movement. So you can see this uh, from time when time goes by, becoming in the, the rainy season, in kind of middle move, especially at the first five meter, it's very clear that the movement is very strong in the first five meter. So even though the colluvium from the preliminary investigation is found to be uh, found to have the thickness of about 20 meter, but the real moving part is concentrated in about five meters, as you can see here. So it's moved. And whenever, uh, whenever there's a raining, the movement occur. Whenever it's in the rainy season, it's occur. It's moved. Okay. But from the in the dry season, the movement will still uh, will stay at the same location almost. Um, by checking the rate of movement, even though the magnitude of movement is quite large, but the rate is not that fast. Uh, it in the rate of the moderate to slow, slow to the moderate. Okay. Um, and this also the same thing. Um, the uh, activity motion, okay, actively motion, so it means that it's moved. And it's a colluvium sliding. It is called colluvium sliding. Okay. These are these are also a very interesting information, showing the information of the groundwater table that we measure from the observation well. The precipitation. This is the precipitation, and the factor of safety of the slope. Factor of safety is the parameter that measuring the safety of the slope. Because factor of safety or the safety of the slope changing uh, with the water content. Okay, in this case, whenever the groundwater exceeds some limit, okay, it means that groundwater is getting higher and soil became wet and soft. Yeah. Then the slope start to move. The slope start to move when the factor of safety of the of the slope will be less than one. If it's less than one, there are going to be some movement. So you can see that for 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 example, the first year here, for the whole rainy season, yeah, factor of safety of the slope is less than one. So it means that the slope stability is less than the balancing of the movement. So it means that it keeps moving. 
Okay, but it's not going fast because of uh, in this area, the columbium area, the compilation or accumulation of the columbium is it's not that in the steep slope, but it will be in the flat slope. So that's why even though the factor of safety is less than one, but it's not going to slide down very fast because the slope is really gentle. So that's why it's moved slowly, slowly. Okay, so that that the situation that's what's going on. And by slow movement from time to time, the returning wall gets the push from the soil movement, so causing the returning wall failure, like this one. Like this one. This is the photo of the inclinometer after we've been using it for some years. Okay. Um, we also make the uh, hazard map showing the area where the factor of safety will be less than one, especially during the rainy season. So these are the things that um, uh, we need to use in order to discuss with the people who live here, okay, that um, they are living in the red zone, okay, and then what will be the next step of mitigation. We need to discuss and then we need to get the cooperation from the local people who live over there. Okay, we cannot just make decision from the uh, from from the point our point of view and then force them to do. Eh? We need to work together with them. So that's the reason why that we need to produce this kind of map in, or, in order to make everyone see the situation at the same point. The mitigation, um, the direct mitigation is uh, if we have high water table and causing the slope movement, so we better drain the water out. Okay, it's either by using what we call the horizontal drain. Basically, they're gonna drill the boreholes horizontal, almost in horizontal direction, and then drain the water out from the slope. So slope will keep dry or not too wet. And that means the factor of safety will be uh, higher than the situation where we do nothing. Um, besides the, the borehole drains like this, we can also have what we call the sharp drain. Okay, this is a sharp drain. It's a big diameter, okay, of the, of the tank. We can say underground tank that we install deep down, okay, 10 meter, five meter, it depends on the area, depends on the topographic and geologic information. And then after that, they're gonna bring in the machine for horizontal drilling. So they're gonna drill in horizontal way in order to draw the water out from the slope. Okay, so the key point to uh, that um, we can stabilize the moving slope is to use the horizontal drain okay, in order to keep the slope material dry okay, or not too wet. Now in conclusion from what I have said, um, I would like to discuss about the factors affecting landslide. Okay, you may have seen some or understand some, but let's see the overview. Uh, the factor of safety, uh, the, the factor that affecting landslide, um, we can classify into two uh, big group. One is the static factors and the other is the trigger factors. The static factor, okay, including the geological structure, okay, the lineament, the structure of the rock, the rock that incline, the bedding of the rock is inclined and ready to go. Something like that. That is uh, what we call the geologic, geologic structure. 
slope angle, this is everyone know. If it's steep, it will be able to slide down very easy. Elevation is relating with the uh, uh, kinematic uh, energy and static energy. Okay. Um, surface and groundwater, this is very important. Uh, water can reduce the strength of the soil. Topsoil characteristic, for example, uh, will drain or difficult to drain. Okay, if it's will drain, so it means that um, when the water, uh, when the rainfall occur, the water will be infiltrated easily down to the lower, lower layer and then it can cause um, the strength reduction of those layer and slide. Engineering soil properties, okay, we talk about the strength reduction. Okay, when the whenever the water content is higher, and then there's a behavior of the uh, strength that reduce. Land use and land cover or with in this area that area has the vegetation or not. Those are the static factor, and actually I cannot say that it's the factor that will not change by time, but uh, of course the geologic structure difficult to change, slope angle uh, difficult to change, except, you know, the, there are going to be some uh, uh, cutting of the slope or changing of the slope by the human. And um, becoming more to be less static, like a land use that can be changed by time. What about the trigger factors? Okay, these are the fact. These are the factors that can cause or trigger the landslide. First is rainfalls. Okay, rainfall. We have two parameter of rainfall. First is the antecedents rainfall or antecedent precipitation. It's a, it's a the record of the accumulation of the precipitation by time. So if it accumulates, okay, more and more, the soil became saturated and then easily to slide. Another factor is the intensity, okay, and how strong at one time, at one day, at one hour that the uh, rainfall comes. If it's too intense, they're going to cause erosion, they're going to cause the infiltration and then causing the slow failure and so on. Another trigger factor beside the rainfall, okay, but again, as I emphasize from the, uh, from the part one of the lecture, okay, most of the landslide occur uh, because of the rainfall or precipitation, but it can, it can also uh, has a very weak landslide by the earthquake. Okay. Earthquake can cause landslide, but it depends on the magnitude of the earthquake and also the peak ground acceleration okay, of the earthquake. The PGA is a peak ground acceleration. Okay. Now, once you know the factors that may trigger the landslide or may cause, you know, the, the potential of landslide. Now let's see the mechanism of rainfall trigger landslide. This is a very interesting curve. Okay. Um, this is the factor of safety. Factor of safety, if it's lower than one, so it means that the slope is unstable or unsafe. If it's more than one, it means it's safer. If it's much, much more than one, it's very safe. Um, and this is time. Uh, when we look at the, uh, some natural slope, when the time, when time goes by, um, that slope as a rock, rock will be degraded. So factor of safety will slowly reduce, slowly reduce, okay. But from time to time, there will be a heavy rain, like this one, heavy rainfall. Whenever you have heavy rainfall, the factor of safety will be reduced. 
because of the water put into the system, the shear strength getting lower, so factor of safety getting lower. But if the slope is well drained, uh, either by the natural uh, natural property of the late uh, subsoil, or there might be some drainage that provide okay, into the slope by horizontal drain technique or some other technique. Okay, if we can drain the water out from the system, I mean from the slope, factor of safety will be regained. Uh, if it dry, uh, it will regain back to almost the same location. Okay, if we have what we call a persistent rainfall, keep coming, keep coming, even though it's not strong, even though it's not hard, but it continue raining from, you know, uh, uh, in many days. This can also reduce the factor of safety in a very long time. Now, when you look at the mountain, you never know that what is the factor of safety of that slope. It could be very high like that, or actually it's very slow, it's very really low, that if there's some heavy rainfall, the factor of safety will be lower than one, so it means that it will slide. But if you look at this, the factor or the mechanism that showing the, the very fast reduction of the factor of safety, this is by what? This is by slope cutting or changing the slope angle, make it steeper, can really reduce the factor of safety permanently. Besides the cut slope at the toe, uh, the erosion from the water that flow down from the mountain and then to the toe, it has an erosion effect. And that can change the slope of the ground Okay, to be more steep. Okay, this is the map showing the multi hazard, eh? natural hazard. Okay, um, several things that happen in Thailand. Okay, we have the landslide, we have the uh, active fault over there, something like that. Okay, um, let me stop here for the second part and I will continue the third part and the rest. Um, in the meantime, I also would like to suggest you um, to go to my YouTube channel. Okay, my YouTube channel is uh, Geotech Now. There's a video of this lecture, lecture one also already there. Okay, and then um, there are also uh, several interesting things, information yeah, about the uh, natural hazard or man-made hazard, like uh, the question of the Jakarta, is it gonna sink? Or even um, my city, Bangkok, do we have to move it because of the seawater rise and it will be inundated. Okay, the Bangkok city. There are some footage uh, by drone of the dam break and some other things, okay. And also the clip video that showing the landslide events in many parts of the Thailand. Okay. So let's take a break and then um, we will continue for the third lecture. Okay, so 